Emma, Novel Episode 7 The very day of Mr. Elton's going to London produced a fresh occasion for Emma's services towards her friend. Harriet had been at Hartfield, as usual, soon after breakfast, and, after a time, had gone home to return again to dinner, she returned, and sooner than had been talked of, and with an agitated, hurried look, announcing something extraordinary to have happened which she was longing to tell. Half a minute brought it all out. She had heard, as soon as she got back to Mrs. Goddard's, that Mr. Martin had been there an hour before, and finding she was not at home, nor particularly expected, had left a little parcel for her from one of his sisters, and got away, and on opening this parcel, she had actually found, besides the two songs which she had lent Elizabeth to copy, a letter to herself, and this letter was from him, from Mr. Martin, and contained a direct proposal of marriage. Who could have thought it? She was so surprised she did not know what to do. Yes, quite a proposal of marriage, and a very good letter, at least she thought so. And he wrote as if he really loved her very much, but she did not know, and so, she was come as fast as she could to ask Miss Woodhouse what she should do. Emma was half ashamed of her friend for seeming so pleased and so doubtful. Upon my word, she cried, the young man is determined not to lose anything for want of asking. He will connect himself well if he can. Will you read the letter? cried Harriet. Pray do. I'd rather you would. Emma was not sorry to be pressed. She read, and was surprised. The style of the letter was much above her expectation. There were not merely no grammatical errors, but as a composition it would not have disgraced a gentleman, the language, though plain, was strong and unaffected, and the sentiments it conveyed very much to the credit of the writer. It was short, but expressed good sense, warm attachment, liberality, propriety, even delicacy of feeling. She paused over it, while Harriet stood anxiously watching for her opinion, with a well, well, and was at last forced to add, is it a good letter? Or is it too short? Yes, indeed, a very good letter, replied Emma rather slowly, so good a letter, Harriet, that everything considered, I think one of his sisters must have helped him. I can hardly imagine the young man whom I saw talking with you the other day could express himself so well, if left quite to his own powers, and yet it is not the style of a woman, no, certainly, it is too strong and concise, not diffuse enough for a woman. No doubt he is a sensible man, and I suppose may have a natural talent for, thinks strongly and clearly, and when he takes a pen in hand, his thoughts naturally find proper words. It is so with some men. Yes, I understand the sort of mind. Vigorous, decided, with sentiments, to a certain point, not coarse. A better written letter, Harriet, returning it, than I had expected. Well, said the still waiting Harriet, well, and, and what shall I do? What shall you do? In what respect? Do you mean with regard to this letter? Yes. But what are you in doubt of? You must answer it of course, and speedily. Yes. But what shall I say? Dear Miss Woodhouse, do advise me. Oh no, no. The letter had much better be all your own. You will express yourself very properly, I am sure. There is no danger of your not being intelligible, which is the first thing. Your meaning must be unequivocal, no doubts or demurs, and such expressions of gratitude and concern for the pain you are inflicting as propriety requires, will present themselves unbidden to your mind, I am persuaded. You need not be prompted to write with the appearance of sorrow for his disappointment. You think I ought to refuse him then, said Harriet, looking down. Ought to refuse him? My dear Harriet, what do you mean? Are you in any doubt as to that? I thought, but I beg your pardon, perhaps I have been under a mistake. I certainly have been misunderstanding you, if you feel in doubt as to the purport of your answer. I had imagined you were consulting me only as to the wording of it. Harriet was silent. With a little reserve of manner, Emma continued. You mean to return a favorable answer, I collect. No, I do not, that is, I do not mean, what shall I do? What would you advise me to do? Pray, dear Miss Woodhouse, tell me what I ought to do? 
I shall not give you any advice, Harriet. I will have nothing to do with it. This is a point which you must settle with your feelings. I had no notion that he liked me so very much, said Harriet, contemplating the letter. For a little while Emma persevered in her silence, but beginning to apprehend the bewitching flattery of that letter might be too powerful, she thought it best to say. I lay it down as a general rule, Harriet, that if a woman doubts as to whether she should accept a man or not, she certainly ought to refuse him. If she can hesitate as to yes, she ought to say no directly. It is not a state to be safely entered into with doubtful feelings, with half a heart. I thought it my duty as a friend, and older than yourself, to say thus much to you. But do not imagine that I want to influence you. Oh! No, I am sure you are a great deal too kind to, but if you would just advise me what I had best do, no, no, I do not mean that, as you say, one's mind ought to be quite made up, one should not be hesitating, it is a very serious thing, it will be safer to say no, perhaps, do you think I had better say no? Not for the world, said Emma, smiling graciously, would I advise you either way. You must be the best judge of your own happiness. If you prefer Mr. Martin to every other person, if you think him the most agreeable man you have ever been in company with, why should you hesitate? You blush, Harriet. Does anybody else occur to you at this moment under such a definition? Harriet, Harriet, do not deceive yourself, do not be run away with by gratitude and compassion. At this moment, whom are you thinking of? The symptoms were favorable but, instead of answering, Harriet turned away confused, and stood thoughtfully by the fire, and though the letter was still in her hand, it was now mechanically twisted about without regard. Emma waited the result with impatience, but not without strong hopes. At last, with some hesitation, Harriet said, Miss Woodhouse, as you will not give me your opinion, I must do as well as I can by myself, and I have now quite determined, and really almost made up my mind, to refuse Mr. Martin. Do you think I am right? Perfectly, perfectly right, my dearest Harriet, you are doing just what you ought. While you were at all in suspense I kept my feelings to myself, but now that you are so completely decided I have no hesitation in approving. Dear Harriet, I give myself joy of this. It would have grieved me to lose your acquaintance, which must have been the consequence of your marrying Mr. Martin. While you were in the smallest degree wavering, I said nothing about it, because I would not influence, but it would have been the loss of a friend to me. I could not have visited Mrs. Robert Martin, of Abbey Mill Farm. Now I am secure of you forever. Thank you for watching.